Today I'm going to be doing a pretty massive book haul. I recently have acquired a lot of classics, a lot of festive holiday type of books, as well as all of the age groups. We've got middle grade, adult, YA, you know, classics. Just, I have so many good ones. If I do say so myself. Like, look at these gorgeous Jane Austen editions. The artwork on this book about Ella Montgomery. This diary of Captain Wentworth cover. And then look at how creepy this one is. You open the dust jacket. Oh my gosh, it's the story of a nutcracker. So I have a lot and I will share all of them with you. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. I was so excited when they wanted to work with me again because I absolutely adore this book subscription service. In my opinion, they are just the top of the top in terms of offering freedom to skip a month or give you the best options in terms of titles that they offer and also getting early releases. They just do everything right and I'm slightly obsessed with them. So for those of you who don't know, Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for any type of reader. Each month they offer five different picks and you can choose which one you are most interested in. And what I love that's super unique to Book of the Month is that if you don't like any of them, none of them are really calling to you, you can just simply press skip month and then you don't have to pay anything that month and you just skip it. But then on the flip side, if you like two books, you can choose two. So I absolutely love that freedom that I have in being able to choose. So how it works is the Book of the Month team that's hundreds of books and gives readers their choice from a curated selection of new and early release titles. So you can spend more time reading and less time researching. And like I mentioned, you can skip a month. It's completely risk-free. Another one of my favorite things is that they get early release titles. So for example, maybe a book is coming out on the 29th of the month, but if you subscribe to book of the month and book of the month chooses that one for one of their top five picks that month, you can get it within the first or second week of the month, depending on where you live and how long shipping takes you could possibly get it within the first few days of the month, whereas it doesn't even come out to the rest of the public until the very end of the month. And I'm so excited specifically for this month because if you've never tried Book of the Month, now is the time they are offering the most amazing promo this month, which is getting your first book for only $5. If you wanna take advantage of this amazing offer, you can use the code BOOKWISH to get your first book for only $5. And I will have a link right down in my description box for you. Now, as part of this book haul, Book of the Month has kindly sent me all of their picks for December. Okay, here they are. First up, we have one that I was so excited to see that they chose for December because I've been wanting to read this and I've been so, so anticipating it. And that is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. This is a festive rom-com about a woman that is caught in a time loop. I think it's on Christmas day or the day before Christmas day. And she keeps having to relive the same day in order to find happiness. And I also love that it is set in Utah. That is where I live. And I started reading it and I recognize some of the places in it, which I think is really cool. Next up, we've got a contemporary fiction called This Close to Okay by Lisa Rose Smith. It's about how a near tragedy brings these two strangers together who might just have the ability to save each other's lives. I think this is definitely gonna have to deal with some hard hitting topics, but I think it's gonna be really good. And then we've got the thriller for this month, which I'm so excited about. It's called The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And what I love about this is that it's a twist on Jane Eyre. It has gothic vibes, but it's set in the South here in the US. On the inside of the dust jacket, it says a vivid reimagining of one of literature's most twisted love triangles, a reimagined modern day thriller that has gothic vibes. I am so here for. And then we've actually got a collection of short stories called The Office of Historical Corrections a novella and stories by Danielle Evans. So from what I know, it's an insightful collection of short stories that kind of cut to the heart of contemporary life here in America. And then we've got another thriller and it is called People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. So this one is about an influencer mom and one creepy follower that might just make you want to stay off of your phones for a little while. On the top, it says followed by millions, watched by one. Oh, that sounds so creepy. So those are all of the picks I am most excited about in a holidays and the wife upstairs. I cannot wait to dive into these two. So thank you again to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Now let's dive into the rest of the book. Uh, let's start with my favorite category, classics. All right, first up, I got these two Jane Austen novels. I got Northanger Abbey and Emma. These are the Wordsworth classic editions, I think. Yeah, the Wordsworth Collector Editions. I got these on Book Depository. I love the Emma one. It has these really like sparkly strawberries. 
guys see that? They have glitter on them. This is a light pink, like a very light blush pink cover. I have been collecting these every other month because I have a Jane Austen book club and you can join. I have the link in the description box. The book for December and January is Emma. So I just recently got Emma. So yes, I love these and I am so excited to eventually have all of them. Next up, I have a few winter and Christmas themed classics. First up, I have Snowdrift by Georgette Hare. So it's Snowdrift and the other stories. Okay, I have to read to you guys the first sentence. <clears throat> A thin covering of snow already lay on the ground when the Bath and Bristol light post coach set out from Holborn at two o'clock in the afternoon of a bleak December day. Does that just sound perfect for December? And then next up, I have Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie. And again, this is another collection of short stories, but by Agatha Christie. And I'm pretty sure that unlike the Snowdrift one, these are actually all either winter themed or Christmas themed. This is going to be perfect for reading in the evening while I sit by the fire and drink some hot chocolate. There's nothing like a good mystery in winter time, in my opinion, especially if it involves murder. And then the last festive classic that I have is called An English Christmas, edited by John Julius Norwich, because what this is, is so amazing. It's a collection of classic literature that's all set during Christmas time. So for example, okay, so one of the first parts is called Dinner at the Westons from Emma by Jane Austen. Because part of Emma does take place during Christmas, they took the part that takes place during Christmas and put it in this book. So they have all these famous authors and they've taken and compiled all of their Christmas stories or Christmas parts of their novels so that you can just indulge in your favorite classic authors during Christmas time. On the back it just says, this year go carol singing in the Cotswolds with Laurie Lee, uh, shop for presents with Virginia Woolf, or eat far too much with Agatha Christie. Celebrate Christmas at Chatsworth in the workhouse or marooned on the ice with Shackleton. It even has William Shakespeare in here. And Tolkien, I didn't realize Tolkien was in here, I'm so excited. It's got Nancy Mitford, Charles Dickens, George Elliot. I didn't even realize that many authors right now. I'm so excited. You guys are just watching me gush out about this book, but I am so stoked for this one. Okay, and then we have some classics that are not festive and Christmassy. I put this next one in the classics category, but it's not actually a classic. It's called House of Dreams, The Life of Ellen Montgomery by Liz Rosenberg. It's no secret that Ellen Montgomery has become one of my favorite authors. She's the author of the Anne and Green Gables series. And so I picked up this book all about her life, and I think the cover is so beautiful. I was also love that it has such beautiful illustrations, not only on the front cover, but on the inside of the book as well. I love reading about authors that I love and learning more about their lives. So I'm really excited to learn more about Ella Montgomery. Okay, and then I have this one, which is also not a classic, but I put it in here again because it's, it's basically a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen from Captain Wentworth's perspective. If you haven't read Persuasion, Captain Wentworth is our leading man. He's amazing, better than Darcy in some ways, but we won't get into that controversial discussion. So this one is called Captain Wentworth's Diary by Amanda Grange. I love the color of the blush pink and the blue background and, oh, so pretty. So I picked this one up because in Persuasion, we don't really get to see a lot of what Captain Wentworth is thinking, what's going through his head. So I'm really excited for this. Obviously, I'm not expecting the writing to be like Jane Austen, but I love living in any Jane Austen world for as long as I can. So I had to pick this one up. And then for our last classic, I have Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day by Winifred Watson. This edition has beautiful French flaps. Also, there are illustrations in this edition, which I love. I'm always a fan of illustrations, wherever I can get them. And this one actually has a movie adaptation with Amy Adams. And I picked this one up because obviously I love classics, but it's set within a 24 hour period. And I love to read books that are all set in one day. It's kind of a Cinderella, not retelling, but it has Cinderella vibes. From what I know, Miss Pettigrew is kind of down on herself. And then she comes in contact with this really rich, really popular, Gosh, lady, I don't know much about it other than I think that she like hires her to help her and in the process she kind of transforms into a new person and I think it's just gonna be a really good story. Okay, that is all for the classics. Next up, let's do the YA books. 
The first one is A Snowfall of Silver by Laura Wood. It has this beautiful silver foiling on the cover. I am the biggest fan of Laura Wood because she has this way of writing that reminds me so much of I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith, which is one of my favorite classics. I love how it's like you're reading a diary. This one takes place in 1931. It's about our main character who was born and raised in Cornwall and she wants to become an actress and pursue acting in theater. So she runs off to London and there's romance involved. It's going to be very atmospheric and very sweet based on what I know about Laura Wood's writing. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year. I'm, I'm so excited to get into this one. So next up, we have a murder mystery set in an estate in English countryside with one of my favorite amateur sleuths. And that is I Am Half Sick of Shadows by Alan Bradley. This book features one of my favorite amateur sleuths. She lives in this manor house with her dad and two sisters. This book, I'm pretty sure that they need some money. So they rent out their home during Christmas time to a filming crew. And then while they're there filming, there's a massive snowstorm and they get all snowed in so nobody can leave. And of course, it's the perfect time for murder to happen. So while their house is cut off from the outside world and nobody can come or go, and this also happens in the midst while Flavia is working on an experiment to prove the existence of Father Christmas, but she has to put that on hold because she is now going to solve this murder. This series is always so good to cuddle up with. You don't have to read it in order if you don't want. If you just wanna pick up this one, you could. They're so good. Okay, and then the last YA book that I have is Castle in the Clouds by Kirsten Gear. I picked this one up because one, the cover is beautiful, and two, it's set at a grand hotel in Europe. It doesn't specifically say in the book where they are, but I know they speak German, so probably Germany, Austria, or Switzerland. It's about this girl named Sophie who gets an internship at this grand hotel because she graduated, she doesn't really know what to do with her life, and while she's there, there is some romance that blossoms and also a mix mystery to solve about some missing children and possible kidnappers. It's so good. Okay, those are all of the Y books, so let's move on to nonfiction. Don't stop watching here, you know, because some people think nonfiction is boring, but I'm here to tell you that that is not true. For example, this first book that I've got here. <sighs> This is called The Christmas Chronicles by Nigel Slater. And let me tell you, if you struggle with winter and you kind of need a guide to help you appreciate it and to fall more in love with it, this is the book you need. On the back it says, this is the story of my love for winter. The scent of fire and spruce, ghost stories read with a glass of slow gin, the beeswax candles with shadows dancing on the ceiling, with the recipes, fables, and quick fireside suppers. From November to early February, I take you through my essential preparations for Christmas Christmas and the new year and everything you need to enjoy the winter months. For example, it has beautiful pictures. And then next to it, he talks about the magic of going on a walk through the snow. There are so many beautiful pictures. There's a specific session all about fire and how fireplaces are related to being cozy and romanticizing sitting by the fire with a cup of hot chocolate. He just takes you into all these ways to make your winter more magical. And along with that, he has amazing recipes. This book is full of over a hundred recipes that are perfect for winter and use foods that are in season during winter. So this is going to be my holy grail this winter because I always struggle during the dark months, during the cold times to stay motivated and stay positive and optimistic. So I'm relying on this. I have already started it and it has helped me. I honestly feel like this book is like going to a therapist to help me deal with my winter blues. So if you are like that as well, I would highly recommend this book to you. Okay, next nonfiction that I have is called Manderley Forever, a biography of Daphne du Maurier, who is one of my all time favorite authors. She's the author of Rebecca, Jamaica, and The House on the Strand. So many amazing novels. I have been meaning to pick up this one forever because like I said, I love learning about the authors that I love. So I'm really excited to read this one. And then next we have a book that I feel like only I would buy <laughs> and it's called Watching the English, The Hidden Rules of English Behavior by Kate Fox. So if you don't know me, um, I'm kind of in love with England and the UK in general and everything about it. So I had to pick up this book because it is true that if you're from the UK, you definitely have different mannerisms and ways of speaking. It's quite a chunky book as well. So let's just open a page and see what we land on. Class rules, food rules. Okay, so I guess there's like all these different rules about food and address, rules of sex. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, flirting rules. Oh, is flirting different in the UK? The courtesy flirting rule. <laughs> what is this? Male bonding rules and the girl watching ritual. <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. Okay, moving on. This last nonfiction is one that I picked up from the library and it is called Jane Austen's England by Roy and Leslie Adkins. All I know about this one is that it takes a look at the time period that Jane Austen lived in England and just English life in general in the 19th century. If it has to do with Jane Austen and it also has to do with England, then it's like a 100% yes, I will read it. Also, I apologize if you can hear all of this noise outside. It's snowing now, so all of these snowplows are coming out and making a lot of noise in the process. But okay, let's move on to adult books. First up, we've got the one that I showed you at the beginning of the video. It's called Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. And I think he also wrote Wicked. Yeah, okay, New York Times bestselling author of Wicked. <laughs> it is a tale of the once and a future nutcracker. And yeah, if you take off the dust jacket, got a kind of creepy nutcracker. <laughs> but from what I know about this one, it's not this very happy fairy tale. It is a bit more dark, a kind of dark version of how the nutcracker story came to be. But I love anything that has to do with nutcracker, which is why I picked this one up. Next, I got Dickens at Christmas by Charles Dickens. It's a collection of short stories that all have to do with Christmas and winter. And the cover is just absolutely beautiful. And you guys wanna know a secret? This is like 35 bucks on Book Depository, but I found it on eBay for $8. And it's brand new. If you wanna find a cheaper way to get books, definitely check out eBay. I get so many books from eBay. I have a lot of festive books now. First, I have Sleigh Rides and Silver Bells at the Christmas Fair. I have raved about this book all season and I finally got my hands on a physical copy because I listened to the audiobook and it was phenomenal. It's such a sweet story about a girl who goes to work at this manor house and while she's there, she is struggling with Christmas because of a lot of trauma that has happened in her past. And then one of the sons comes home for Christmas and he is struggling with the fact that he needs to take over the estate when his father passes away. And they come in contact and both help each other with the things that they're struggling with. He helps her fall back in love with Christmas and she helps him fall back in love with the estate and where they live in the English countryside. It's such a sweet story. It has a lot of depth to it. It's not just a fluff story. Anything actually by Heidi Swain is absolutely amazing. I've read like three or four of her books now and every single one of them has been either 4.5 or five stars. Then I picked up this one and I literally know absolutely nothing about it, but the cover is really nice and drew me in and it's called Carols and Chaos by Cindy Anstey. Okay, it's set in England in 1817. The Yuletide season includes mistletoe and mayhem in equal measure, so. Ooh, I think there's actually mystery involved. Okay, wait, hold on. It says falling in love would be a disaster for either of them, but staving off their feelings for each other becomes the least of their problems when a devious counterfeiting scheme reaches the gates of Shackfold Park and Kate and Matt are unwillingly swept up into the intrigue. Okay, so it's mystery romance Christmas time winter vibes. I'm even more excited for this now. And then I have A Holiday by Gaslight by Mimi Matthews. This is a Victorian Christmas novella that I have raved about. I am obsessed with this book. It's a proper romance, so there's no steamy scenes in it. It's about two people who started courting, kind of arranged by their parents, kind of not, and they just didn't really go together well, but they decided to give it a second chance and they have eight days at Christmas time. They gave themselves eight days to see if they could get to know each other better and if they could fall in love. And it's so sweet. And then I got this book. I could have included this in the classics category, but I didn't. It is The Secret Diaries of Charlotte Bronte by Siri James. So I think this is based on the diary of Charlotte Bronte, but it's fictional. That's all I know about it, and that's why I picked it up. I will, like I said, read anything that has to do with Brontes or her Jane Austen or Agatha Christie. Okay, that is finally all of the adult books, so let's move on to middle grade. This first one is called The Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place, The Mysterious Howling by Mary Rose Wood. I picked this one up, one, because I love the artwork on the cover, and two, because of a tagline that I saw about how it's this governess who gets, I think, one of her first governing jobs. But when she gets there, she sees these like wild kids running in the woods. She's like, what? And she becomes a governess to these children that are like essentially wild. And she goes to teach these children how to be civil um, in time for a holiday ball that they have to go to. And I'm really excited for 
for it. Next, I have two books I have to do with The Nutcracker because like I said, I love it. So I have The Jocelyn Meyer's Dream, a Nutcracker retelling. This is the vintage Christmas edition because it has black and white pictures in it. Funny thing is when I picked this one up, I went to Goodreads to see the reviews and there are zero reviews for it. So hopefully it's good. And it says that it is a retelling for fans of medieval fantasy and old fashioned fairy tales. And that is what drew me in. And that is all I know about it. And then I have The Toymaker's Apprentice by Sherry L. Smith. All I know is that it's about a boy who is an apprentice to his dad, who is a toy maker, until one day his dad gets kidnapped and disappears. And then our main character gets enlisted by his cousin to find this magical nut to save a cursed princess who has become a living doll of wood. He must save this princess and his father from the fantastical mouse queen and her son, the seven-headed prince of mice, both of whom have sworn to destroy all who bear the name Drosselmeyer. I think out of all of the Nutcracker retellings, I'm most excited for this one. And then I got Enola Holmes because I saw the film and I loved it so much and I plan on getting the rest of them as well. And then I have two Christmassy ones and the first one is The Vanderbeekers of 144, 141st Street by Karina Young Glass. Glacier. From what I read about it, it kind of gives me Mary Poppins vibes-ish because it's five days before Christmas and all of a sudden the landlord refuses to renew their lease. So these five siblings have to figure out a way to change the landlord's mind. But what they ultimately need is a Christmas miracle. And I heard that it has like children's classic literature vibes that just reads like a very timeless tale. And then I also got Aggie Morton, Mystery Queen, Peril at Owl Park. I got this one because I saw my friend Liv. She got it and when I saw that it had to do with Agatha Christie and that it's inspired by her I knew I had to pick it up. It's about our young girl named Aggie and her best friend named Hector just like Hercule Poirot and how they solve a murder during Christmas time. I will now be reading all of the Aggie Morton books because this was so phenomenal. <sighs> okay, those are all of the books. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have acquired any new books recently or what book you're most excited to read this season. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye friends.